This story is for my son, Jeff, on his 30th birthday. I call it Jeff at the Wheel. I woke up and we were already heading into the winter storm. This wasn't the plan. I had overslept. I asked my 27-year-old son, Jeff, if he wanted me to take over driving. Inside, I was begging, please just say yes. Just let me take over. He smiled, looked at me and said, I've got it covered. Damn, how am I gonna get back control of the wheel? Jeff and I had spent Super Bowl weekend up in Minneapolis visiting my daughter, Taylor. We had a lot of fun that weekend, but we didn't have a lot of sleep. On top of that, in the morning, I had an early appointment with a client and it had gone long. We had missed the window of opportunity to leave Minneapolis and get out ahead of a large winter storm that was blowing in. I knew that if I was gonna drive through that storm, I needed rest. So I'd ask Jeff if he would take over for just 30 minutes while I napped, and then once I woke up, I'd take over and drive again. That was my plan. I'm the mother, I'm the one who drives, I'm the one who protects. And although I was sitting next to a 27-year-old man, that's not what I saw. I saw a three-year-old on a toddler, on a big wheel, flying down the street, heading towards traffic with me madly running behind him, stop, stop. I saw the 10 year old boy recklessly riding his bike around the corner of the neighborhood right in front of a car. And the mortified look on his face when he realized it was his mother behind the wheel of that car. I saw the 17 year old teenager who took the car and backed it into a brick mailbox while on ice explaining I seem to have confused the brake and the gas pedal. This was the person I saw driving me into a major Midwestern storm on an interstate filled with trucks that would be swerving and sliding. Oh, I reconciled myself that this would be my last road trip. I started to imagine what I would want my obituary to say. And as the snow started to get more dense and blow sideways, my hands started getting sweaty. I decided I'd ask Jeff again about switching places, but I wanted to seem relaxed about the whole thing. So I said, hey, how about if I take over driving? Jeff kind of looked sideways at me. And at this point, I had a decision to make whether I was going to push the issue or not. But you see, Jeff is going to be leaving for a volunteer role in the Peace Corps in just a few weeks. He'd be going to Armenia, almost halfway across the world, in one of the most volatile areas in the world. He had a lot of doubts. Two years is a long time. Would it be the right investment of his life? What if he wasn't successful? Could he learn the language and the culture? What would he miss? How could I, as his mother, encourage him in, to take this step and move forward and have an adventure, but yet I couldn't trust him to drive through a snowstorm? I took a deep breath. I just decided to let Jeff keep driving, but I clutched the door handle. So while my face was making an attempt to look calm, I clutched that door handle. I clutched that door handle so strong that even the plastic was becoming indented. My knuckles were white. I tried not to look down. I was trying to be subtle, hoping Jeff didn't notice. I started planning positions that I take when the car started rolling. I thought about the sound that the pillow would make when it burst through the dashboard at, when we crashed. Then I realized that my hand was actually aching from clutching the door handle so hard. Jeff glanced over. He smiled. And then the music of Dark Side of the Moon came on. He knows I love that album. Years earlier, my 13-year-old son had gone to a concert with his dad and heard that music played live. He came home that night so excited. Mom, I could smell pot. I reminded Jeff of that story. But I also added that it took every ounce of parental restraint not to say to my 13-year-old son, honey, that's how you listen to Dark Side of the Moon. We both laughed. Then the ethereal song, The Great Gig in the Sky came on. It's an eclectic 
song with a willowy range of octaves, Jeff started singing it. Well, then I started singing it with him. And we both started laughing and really got into it. Before I knew it, I had forgotten about that storm for just a few minutes and my grip on that handle had softened. For about the next hour, Jeff played his music. He explained to me the types of music and why he liked it. I learned so much about my son. My grip loosened a bit much more. And although we were in the midst of that storm, we drove along safely with Jeff at the wheel. As Jeff was sharing his music, in the back of my mind, I was thinking about a karaoke performance I had to give in a couple of weeks. I'd never sang karaoke. It was on my bucket list and seemed an easy thing to do. But as the day was coming closer, I found myself getting really scared. I didn't know what song to sing. I shared my worry and predicament with Jeff. He didn't miss a beat. You should sing Bohemian Rhapsody. But that's, yes, yeah, Queen. Yeah, but doesn't, yeah, it goes eight octaves, but you just adjust it. Right, I'll sing Bohemian Rhapsody and just adjust the octaves. I pulled up the music on my cell phone and we actually practiced Bohemian Rhapsody. Jeff nailed it and I learned something else about my son. He knew how to sing karaoke and he'd been successful with it. I had my own personal karaoke coach driving along with me. Poor Jeff, he was such a good sport. In my mind, I was all excited about spending the rest of our time together singing karaoke. I suggested trying other artists, and I tried Carly Simon. Jeff was a kind but firm coach. Well, your voice does sound better, but it's really a sad song. You want to sing something fun. People like Bohemian Rhapsody. They'll help you. They'll support you. I was skeptical, but for the next 60 minutes, Jeff and I did various forms of karaoke and he let me just get into it and practice it. Finally, he did say, can we play another song and not sing karaoke? By this point, we were just about an hour from home and the conditions were really deteriorating. Snow was piling up on the interstate. There was ice and snow blowing everywhere, especially around the big trucks. And the tr there were cars going off the road and it was becoming so threatening. In in fact, there was a truck in particular as we came up to it, we just knew it was going to blind our view. Suddenly, Jeff played the music from Jaws. Do do, do do, do do, do do, do. And as we passed that truck, we played do do, do. And we both laughed and released the tension. And every time we came along something that seemed a bit scary or threatening, we played do do, do. And we laughed and just released the tension. Soon we were home, safe and sound. By this time, I had fully released the grip on the door. And Jeff, for the first time, had taken care of me. And I let that happen. <laughs> and I live to tell this story. And on top of it, I have a karaoke song, too. As a PS to this story, Jeff has now been in Armenia for two and a half years. For two years, he was working in the village of Kapan, teaching English as a second language, assimilating with that culture, and teaching them a bit about ours, too. He then has navigated the pandemic in the city of Yerevan, and recently there's been a war breakout in southern Armenia. This past weekend, he compassionately went down to meet with his friends in the village of Kapan to check on them since they're relatively close to where this breakout of war is happening. He was worried about them and wanted to see them, and they were so happy to see him. Happy birthday, Jeff. I hope it's a wonderful year for you and that you continue to explore the world and see what's there for you.